Hello. Hello. Live stream. A few people on here, but. The streaming of the live. For uh, those who are watching the replay, we go live on Sunday evenings, 7. And. Uh, and trust me, you don't want to miss it. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, Heather. The stuff that gets said here doesn't get said anywhere else. <laughs> Uh, hey, the family flips. Hey, Ashley. Every time I see oh. that name, I always think of like a family like doing backwards flips, like, like gymnastics families. Hmm. Well, but I know that family. I know that they that they, they don't do backflips. Jolyn does. She goes to ninja class. I forgot um, about Jolyn's ninja class. Heather, Alex. Hey, Stivers. Hey, Andrew Littlefield. Hey, the Tinker's wife. It's just Jenny. No, nope, you sure aren't getting a garden tour today. We're posting that no, tomorrow. No, I'm going to post it tomorrow. I didn't get to finish editing it with the holiday. It's okay. I thought I would be able to, but I was not able to. Creator prerogative. Oh, yeah. I was kind of stressing out about it. Jeremiah was like, post it on Monday. It will be okay. So here we are. Um, it will be up tomorrow. And... Thank you, Madeline. I'm loving the kitchen as well. Um, I can do a cartwheel. <laughs> I can't. I cannot do a cartwheel. I could probably do a cartwheel now. I'm getting way more flexible and balanced. Yep. Jeremiah's been working out. Um, Sup. I don't know what that means. Hey, North Star Prep Stutter. I didn't see if that was a can of glue or something, but it said sup, so sup. Ooh, Cogger had broad beans, peas, and kidney beans today. The harvest is starting to come in for sure. I keep yawning. I'm so sorry. You need um, some tea? Yeah, I need to do something other than sit here and fall asleep. Or we, I, could, I could scare you. No, don't do that. We were, um, hey, Amy, hey, Geared for Life. We were uh, up pretty late last night. Hey, single dad homesteading. Um, oh, sorry, I need to specify. I know what SUP, S-U-P means. I'm sorry. I don't know what the emoji was. It was like a can of glue or something. I couldn't really see. I understand what SUP is. I am not that removed from time. <laughs> I'm still a little cool. Nice job on the kitchen, North Star Prep Stutter. So. Thanks. Gosh, I'm going to try not to just yawn and make you guys yawn the entire time. So we were, we stayed up late. We took the kids with, to my you dad's. You do see shelves in the pantry. Look at that pantry looking baller. It'll be on a tour eventually. Um, we're going to do like a whole like house tour once we get it done. Well, we're doing a kitchen tour this week, but we're trying to get some of the That'll details done. That pretty sure. Well, I already tell people we would. And we can just like the garden. We have the real wow factor. Jeremiah wants all the the eyes. The details matter. The details matter. All the details matter. Come on, guys. The pantry is really awesome. The pantry is one of my favorite things I've done in this whole house. Yeah, it is really awesome. Turned out fantastic. All the tomatoes in the high tunnel are doing pretty well. I showed you guys the issues the other day, and none of that is like progressed any anymore. Um. I did notice today that one of the hybrid tomatoes just has the slightest blush to it. So it looks like we'll probably be harvesting out of there soon. I will tell you that my tomatoes in the front garden look awful. Now the plants are not super unhealthy, but the fruits themselves, I mean, it like it poured rain today. And I had some that were kind of on the brink of ripeness and, um, I wish that I had to harvest them yesterday slightly unripe because now they're all cracked and stuff. And so sorry, I don't usually chew my nails, but I got a splinter underneath that one. Um, I gotta get it out. It's bothering me. Yeah. So I'm. I'm definitely. Um, I, I. I'm excited about all of the tomatoes. I have this ridiculous, like feeling every year and I think what if I don't get anything for my tomato plants and so I had that last week and then finally today I mean like I have a lot of almost ripe tomatoes out there um yeah the pantry is really really cool I was actually unloading things in the kitchen today I'm sorry Valerie uh blight is really rough 
For sure. Any advice on getting rid of grasshoppers? Does anyone have any advice on getting rid of grasshoppers? I've not really dealt with grasshoppers very much, but maybe someone else here. Maya's tomato is almost ripe. Oh, I'm so sorry. About that. We don't need to talk about that. Uh, that video, I think we're, we talked earlier, and I think that we're going to do that this week as well. So, so. I'm going to start fasting on Monday, and we'll eat the tomato on Friday. That should make me hungry. <laughs> Um, tomatillos can get pretty good. They don't get quite as tall as tomatoes because they kind of bush out more. <sighs> um, cool. Berry's crazy cherry. Those are really, really good. I actually had my first one of those the other day too. Yes. You need more than one tomatillo for them to produce. Watering with the molasses is something that usually, I actually haven't done it this year and I need to, but um, usually what that I'll do when it starts to set fruit and then just do it every few weeks after that. Um, who watches your garden when you go on a vacation? Ben Turner. We are very thankful to have Ben turn uh, because, you know, he works here regularly. And so when we go, when we have to be gone, he like knows the routine and the animals know him and all that stuff. So he knows what to do. So anytime that we go. My pottery mugs come from various places, but the ones that I have, the artists I have the most from is Haley Rose Ceramics. And you just have to follow her on Instagram because she like, she actually restocked her shop today, but they're already all sold out. She sold out really fast today. So uh, following her on Instagram is a good thing. It's Haley Rose Ceramics. Um, but I have some from other potters as well. Um, is that a man on our shelf? It's Spock. That's Spock, guys. It's a cookie jar. I realized in unpacking my kitchen that I just have a thing for cookie jars. I have a few. Thank you, Tanya Baker. Um, molasses I just adds, it, it's basically a fer fertilizer. I ate my first tomato today. It was a religious experience. You're so funny, Mark. Uh, I I had, we, we sliced up our first one the other day. It was delicious. The one um, that I cut up today was one of the striped Germans, one of the smaller ones. Oh, it was so stinking good. It, even after it had gotten rained on and split. It was so good. It's like sweet. Oh, my gosh. I just love a homegrown tomato. They're just nothing compares to them. Um, downy mildew and basil. You know, the baking soda with a little bit of dish soap thing really does help with mildew. So you might try that. I don't know on basil, though. I've never dealt with it on that. Mm. Yeah, Mark, did you make a video of your first tomato experience? Um, I have, I have talked with Meg Holler. Yes, we have talked. Um, definitely a hard thing that they've gone through. I know that they're really thankful to be okay. Um, but I have talked to her and we'll be talking to her more soon. The garden tour will be up in the morning. I was not able to finish editing it. Those videos take approximately four to five hours to edit. And I was just not able to get it done before yesterday. And then they take another like eight to upload. So basically when it was not edited by yesterday um, night, it wasn't going to happen today. So it'll be up in the morning. Um, this weekend did not go how I planned, but sometimes that's how it goes. I don't pinch back any zinnia blossoms. Um, it usually, it, I mean, it's never mattered. They, they go crazy, even though I don't do that. Um, I've never had a problem with molasses attracting more ants. I've always had ants with or without that. Like I have ants this year without it. But so I don't, I don't feel like that adds to that. I mean, also, I mean, I'm pouring it directly onto the soil. And so it's, it's not, you know, it's not coating anything. It's just in the soil. Thank you so much, Katie in the know. Um, hey, the Honeystead. Yeah, Rose, when things just don't go as I plan, I, I have a tendency to get really stressed out about, oh, no, it's supposed to be right here at this time. Jeremiah is pretty good at being like, hey, it's it's OK if it's not this one time. Like, it's OK if you don't know, like do your best. And if it doesn't work out how you'd hoped, then 
like it'll be okay. And it largely is. Yeah. And so that's kind of what we had to deal with this week. Thank you, Paige. Red ants are eating my okra and only my okra. Anyone know why? I don't know why, but I do know that ants really take to okra. Um, you know, in the past, what I've done is put, you know, the things that deter ants around there uh, and done little, like bor boratic acid thing where you put it in, you can put it in powdered sugar, make a suspension out of it um, and just put those traps around the okra. Uh, because ants do, I, I've seen that in my garden and I've heard from a lot of other people. I don't know why. Maybe somebody can tell us why. What are the best tomato varieties to grow? I have a couple of videos talking about like my top 10 favorite varieties um, and why, but I, I like most tomatoes when they're grown well. Um, the main thing with growing tomatoes is if you grow tomatoes and like, like right now my plants in my front garden, they look a little rough, but I'll tell you what, those tomatoes taste so stinking good because of how like they have been kind of stressed out this year, like with, uh, with the heat and then the rain and then like all of that. It definitely. We have between the two properties that we're currently using, we have about seven acres. Yeah. Stress makes your fruit really, really tasty for your tomatoes. Like they produce just the, like the chemical compounds that make it flavorful. And they produce more of those whenever the plant is stressed. So they taste super good. Did you upload? A, no, I didn't upload the garden tour and delete it. I did not get it uploaded. I didn't finish editing it. Um, no, uh, I try to shoot garden tours on Thursday morning so that I can edit them Thursday and Friday because they take so long and um, I have <laughs> fallen asleep at two in the morning editing garden tours on Friday night because if I don't start them uploading at night they will not be up the next day. I said a Star Trek figure in your background. It's getting attention. <laughs> yeah it's a cookie jar. Um, it's Spock. Peppers yeah peppers get hotter the the more uh, dry that they are um they they get hotter like if you're if you're not watering them a lot the thing is is with anything that's producing fruit uh their flavor is going to become diluted with lots and lots of water so yeah i know we're yawning, we're yawning like crazy um we are going to do a kitchen tour. We were trying to get the details all done and everything moved in so we could show you guys like all of the details, but uh, we haven't done that yet. We're waiting on the curtain from my sister. And then I've just been, I mean, I've been unpacking today. Um, I mean, there's other details, but yeah. Yeah. I would, I've, I've been today. Uh, Cassie Johnson. Hi from San Diego, California. I recently found your channel when I came across your vlog titled an inspired gardener as a motivator gardener. I've never, I've been tuning in ever since. Well, thank you, Cassie. I'm glad to have you here with us. Um, that was pretty recent. So I hope that you're getting caught up and I'm glad that you're here. Ever think of doing an intern type thing for more people? I know a person like me would love an environment to learn what it's like to work on a homestead and help out as well. Um, Right now, probably not the current situation that we're in. Like our long-term vision is to have like a farm that's also a learning center and to have like teachers and to have programs and to have structure and to have, you know, like workshops and all of that stuff. Like that's what we really would like. As of right now, this is just our home where we do our life and do our homeschool and wake up in the morning and go out in our pajamas. And, you know, like it's, it's kind of like, I, I probably will need the setup to be a little bit different before we start doing like a routine intern program. Um, and right now, if I can be entirely honest, like just being completely frank, um, we are learning to juggle in a way that we've never had to before. Like, the amount of expansion that has happened in our life as far as what we're doing, um, it's crazy. And we, I mean, I don't, we don't know. You have to learn how to manage stuff. And so right now having something else to manage, I mean, I think we're doing okay with the people like with Ben turn and then with, you know, like my son's been working here for some extra 
for money and stuff like that. Like, I mean, we're managing that, but it feels like a lot sometimes because when you have people saying, what do I need to do? And you don't even know what you need to do yourself. And you're just like, I don't know what you need to do. Um, so Brigitte, I'm 72 years old. And because of you, I have my very first garden. Oh, I love That's hearing really cool. that. Thank you so much for sharing it. That's amazing. Um, Daniel doesn't have his gift address set up for his Amazon wish lifts. Can y'all help? I will contact him and see if we can get him to set that up and make sure um, that he can receive gifts. So definitely I'll let him know. And thank you, Claire. Yeah. I need to talk to Meg Holler and find out how they want us to go about that. As far as like their PayPal. Um, I, if, if, if they've got their PayPal list on a video and somebody wants to share it, I'm completely okay with that. Um, we, I would definitely love that. I, I, I didn't start like a GoFundMe or anything. I haven't talked to her about that yet. I wanted to see kind of like where she stood, but, um, okay. Meg set up a PayPal account. Awesome. So, um, yeah, if we could share Meg's PayPal, I would be totally cool with us sharing the haulers PayPal. Um, and it's good. It's cause what? We still on okay. Side. Did it come back? Mm, I think it's come back. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I know they have car insurance. The wreck was not their fault. Um, I, now the thing is, is that they were driving a paid off vehicle. Megan Ben Holler went a very, very bad car accident. Um, like, a like a car Roger roll total, something. their family was in the car, uh, refresh your feed if you're having some issues. Um, looks it looks like it's going here now, but, um, yeah, so they, um, they were T-boned, their car rolled. Um, they're very dear friends of ours. They have a YouTube channel called the Holler Homestead. They were here and they were on our vlog just like a month ago. They came to pick up some pigs, but they live in uh, North Carolina. And um, so, yeah, they're very, very precious to us. And yeah, I mean, definitely, I think it would be great to be able to bless them. The thing is, is that... Um, yeah, she is expecting a baby. Everybody's okay. Nobody's hurt. Their car is completely totaled. It is very great that they were able, like, that they were in that big vehicle. I mean, like, if you saw the car, like, I, I about cried whenever I saw it. So, okay. So, Amanda Page said the Hollers PayPal is on her last video that they made about the wreck. So, there, there's that. Um any tips for growing ground cherries from seeds? Make sure you don't plant them deeply. Keep the soil moist and keep it warm. They take a while to germinate, so don't give up on them. Literally, sometimes they'll be like three or four weeks before they germinate. So, um, okay, cool. People are sharing the PayPal. Meg at hollerhomestead.com is their PayPal. So if you guys want to do that, um, if y'all want to, you know, the, the really cool thing is whenever you've got somebody who is in a, you know, in a bind like that, and it feels like, oh, I can only give $5 and that feels like not much of anything. But when there are a lot of people who are able to, to do something small like that, it can make a really massive difference. And so, um, I can tell you that, you know, just being good friends with the haulers, like they don't, they don't have debt. They don't go into debt. Like, and so they will wait till they can replace their car without debt. Like that's what they'll do. Um, and so I just definitely think that that would be great to help them. So yeah, I, when I saw the car, I was just like, wow. Um, did you ever see yourself being where you are now when you first started this adventure? Mm. Um, yes and no. Like this? No, not like, I mean, as far as what a huge blessing YouTube has been to us, I don't think I could have really comprehended that. Um, I began posting to my YouTube channel after truly like an encounter with the Lord on my back porch while I was praying. Um, and I really felt like I had a word to do it. And so I had the kind of confidence that a person who has a lot of faith and has seen incredible things happen before 
from words like that. Like I had a confidence that it would do what it was supposed to do and that it would be good. Could I really wrap my head around what's happened? No, it's totally like infinitely more than I could have imagined. Like I, I could not have imagined this. I, we still routinely, like we'll be talking to each other and we'll be like, can you even believe this? Like, this is crazy. Like, I mean, just regularly, like we're just, <laughs> like what I mean you're pretty speechless actually um, are you getting ready to eat the tomato sweet Maya I am getting there also uh, wanted to shout out to Landon he's a nine year old who watches our show and he's actually a little afraid right now because there's a storm heading their way so oh, Landon be you're gonna be just fine It'll be okay. I'm glad you're getting to watch us right now, Landon. Thank you for watching us. Um, you made jam and chutneys. I know I've made jams on vlogs chutneys. before, but I don't think I have like a dedicated vlog about it. Is that what you call it. jam when it doesn't turn out and call it a chutney? No, chutneys are like, like, I don't I know. know. I've made chutneys. It's so if like it's jam like, comes and it's like doesn't set up, it's called, oh, I just made strawberry syrup. And if it does set up too much, is it a chutney? It's like, oh. So no, it's, it's like more like chunky. Like right. It's, so if it and sets it's, up too hard, it's a chutney. And you use chutneys differently. Really? What do you use chutneys for? I don't think we're going to do the tomato video on a live video. I think, I think we're, we're going to shoot a vlog. I think we're going to shoot a vlog with it so that everybody can see it and make sure that they're able to reference it. Um, but the tomato that we have picked is a really good size Dr. Witchies. And it is just barely green on the shoulders. So it'll be here in the next couple of days. Um, Natalie, I'm so glad to hear that your garden is doing well. Yeah, chutney's good on meats. Like, that's how I think of it, too. Like, chutney is the kind of thing that you put on, like, meat. I think so, too, Homestead Hopeful. I think he just likes the word. What? Okay, chutney is, like, savory and sweet, and jam is just sweet. Okay, so how do you make a chutney? I've made them before. I made one when? with like figs and pears. You didn't care for it. <laughs> it was a few years ago. It was yeah. when I got all those pears that I canned pears for like days and days and days. Do you remember that? I do. Yeah. The canned pears were good. Whatever that other stuff was. It was, it was there. It's, it's more like a relish. That's right. That's a good way. Oh, I don't like relish. So I like relish. I want to make, um, I'm going to make lots of pickle relish. Cool horticulture class. It's held in a greenhouse. I want, uh, that's what I want. Like a big glass greenhouse for our, like I just imagine that with our, like when I think about having an education center, I think about having this big glass greenhouse where people come and they get to learn. No, you don't have to trellis tomatillos. You might have to give them a little bit of support, like a steak or something like that, but they're not climbers. Living a rogue life. Um, I don't think that I have, but I will go, we'll go check our box. Um, peach chutney is really good. Chutneys are fruits, vinegars, spices, vegetables. Yeah. They kind of have like a vinegary thing to it. <laughs> Betty Bailey says we have rubbish weather in the UK, just rain and wind. Will my plants survive? I just like the fact that you said rubbish. Can I imagine it in a British accent? Well, I watch Liz Zorab and I watch Charles Dowding and they're both doing pretty well with growing food. However, I did tell Liz, well, we get a pretty good amount of rain here for being a place in the U S because we get, I mean, like last year we had 80 inches of rain, which is, that's a lot. And she was just like, she laughed. They got like 150 inches of rain. So that's a lot of rain. Um, Britt Sanchez, it's been a while since you've done a devotional video. Did you decide to stop doing them? No, no. not at all. Um, I just haven't had anything that I felt led to say. So we are of the mind that we're not going to do something out of like that out of obligation. If we feel so led to release something that the Lord puts on us, then we'll do it. If not, we're not going to force it. Yeah. I've thought of some things, but nothing that I really like. I don't know. I mean, I anytime that I feel like I got to share this, I always do. Um, is it unusual for okra to only be about a foot and a half tall this late in the season um, in Georgia? Yeah, I mean, that's mine's, mine's only mine's probably like two feet tall, maybe. 
Um, they really, really take off later in the year, Kimberly. I would say that's probably completely normal. Um, my cucumbers are crazy big and outgrowing the trellis I have for them in their clawfoot toe. Ooh, clawfoot toe. I bet that's really pretty. Um, I mean, it's not going to hurt them for them to come back down and just grow down. You're just going to have to weed through all the foliage. Um, if you can't provide more trellis, just let them go back down to the ground. And then you just have to find your cucumbers and all of that. Um, yeah, I, I agree. A lot of times these live videos end up with something uh, uh, that, sorry, I got, I read a comment without finishing my thought and I got distracted. Uh, that's why I tried not to do that. Um, I can't remember what I was saying. I chased a squirrel and I got lost. Somebody okay. drag my memory. Um, yes, we actually live in Jacksonville. That wow. is our address. So yes, it did come here. I've got a, I've got some thank you notes to send. Right. So right. I think we need to specify, Claire, were you wanting to buy something for yourself? No, she was saying, did it get sent to the wrong address? It shipped right. to Jacksonville. I bought something from no, your yeah, Amazon we live store in Jacksonville. Listen to the question. Is what I'm saying. I bought something from your Amazon store and it shipped to Jacksonville. Did I send it to someone else? She might be saying, I was trying to... Hey, Chris Hansen. Uh, when you harvest, what do you do to keep the veggies good until you use them, preserve them? I'm struggling with radishes, especially going soft before I can use them. Not sure what I'm doing wrong. Soak them in water as soon as you harvest them, Chastity, for about 25 or 30 minutes, just cold water. And, and it doesn't need to be ice water or anything, just cold water out of the sink. And uh, that will allow them to rehydrate. And then at that point, you should be able to refrigerate them and they won't get off uh you know soggy and stuff like that so soak them first mm. that that helps them have a little bit more time um okay just want to know if the tomato for my is a meaty one or does it have a lot of seed jelly also does he get the option of salt and pepper i don't know uh it is meaty dr witchies does not have a lot of seeds that's why i chose that one because it's not just like full of gel and i think you should have the option of salt and pepper i mean salt of the earth <laughs> Uh, Jolene. Thank Jolene. you so much. Sitting here with your coffee. I'm so glad that your garden is amazing. I love hearing that. Hey, Lauren, what's up? Do you have issues with squirrels at all? I really don't have issues with squirrels really badly. They, they have plenty of woods around here and they pretty much leave my garden alone. I have not grown loofah. I have, surprisingly, I just haven't. I really grow a lot of gourds. I agree. I'm growing that kakuzi this year. What the heck is that? That one that's taken over on the other side of the pavilion. Oh, that you can, can't see through it now? Mm. My favorite kale is Ragged Jack. It's also sometimes called Red Ursa. That's that's probably my favorite kale. Like, like squash relish. Yeah, squash relish. Um, you can feed it to your if, pigs. If you freeze it. Oh, Chris, thank you so much for that comment. Your life and your family are devotional and blessing. Thank no, you. No, Chris, you're a devotion. <laughs> Uh, um, you can, you can freeze yellow squash, but it loses its texture. And so after that, it's really going to be, uh, good for like casseroles. So like squash casseroles really good. Well, there's kind of storms rolling in and out. So if the internet's a little spotty, it's just because of that. Um, yeah, you can pick your kale at any time, Crazy Life Homestead. It's done when it's this big if you want a baby green. So you can eat it at any point. Uh, you're not waiting for it, like, to get done. Um, Do the purple carrots taste like the orange? Most carrots basically taste like carrots. There are small changes. So, like, honestly, we did a video once, not on our channel, but we were up at Baker Creek, and Jer was like, let's go have a carrot tasting thing and then we tried like 25 different varieties of carrots straight out of the greenhouse and i would be so surprised at how different each carrot tasted but they still taste like carrots does that make sense so like some of the words that get used is like piney that's like one of the flavor profiles of carrots and then some are more sweet um they're they're like just different varieties like that but yeah so yeah, we have we have talked about the haulers. Um, can you talk about the tattoo on your left arm? Does it say Wilder still? It does say Wilder still. That's actually my handwriting. I wrote that, and then my brother tattooed it on my skin. Um, it's true. That. 
So, um, I answered that one, North Star Preps, there about the squash. I like you answering these garden questions, it's really sweet. Oh, well, you're so this, good. Yeah, <laughs> stop. <laughs> I think you're just really digging me today. I am. Y'all, doesn't Jeremiah look really good? He, has, he is having to buy a new belt because his belt is too small. He has already lost, I don't know what, like, since, since you when? started. Well, I mean, we had. From when I started eating healthy till now, I'm down about 37 pounds. Pretty good. But I've also built up muscle in places I didn't know I had muscle. <laughs> I'm really a lot proud. more flexible. Uh, yeah, my brother did these tattoos also. Yeah, this is my eagle glove and anchor from my Marine Corps days. Yep. See, it's an eagle. So you can kind of tell they're sort of similar. So actually, this fall, I'm going and getting started on the rest of this. And then I've got a tattoo I want to do for my mom and my son. So yep. I'm going to get both of those probably lined out. Yep. I do want more tattoos. I actually have more tattoos planned. I just hate getting them. I'm really a weenie about that. So I haven't been, I haven't even finished this. Like this isn't done because I'm like, you know, elbow, let's go fishing instead. I don't want to do that. That's bad. Um, Ashley Lumby, thank you so much for that pour over video. You've changed my life. I'm so glad. Uh, I the, loved the feedback from the coffee. The Rebel video. Is, is better than the pour over, guys. Come on. Like, I know. Co somebody commented and I'm was like, like mm -hmm. you have an espresso machine, but you prefer the pour over. No, like, yes, I don't. I do. I prefer the Breville every single time because it's a hundred times better. Our plan is to go to Homesteaders of America. I, you know, I haven't heard any update on that, so I have no idea what is going to happen with that. But we had booked an Airbnb, so like, I that was the plan. Hello from Lily and Tyler in Kentucky. We love your videos. You inspired us to plant a garden in our backyard, and we're learning so much. Clock Town Kid, thank you so much, uh, Lily and Tyler. We appreciate that. Hey, Heather Smith, thank you so much for that. Shelves in the kitchen. Please share where I got them. I built them. These are made from me. Yeah, from Jeremiah. It's two by twelve lumber. You buy at Home Depot. Cut to fit, sanded, stained, polyurethane. The shelving is black iron pipe, which is essentially a gas line pipe, and you basically buy different fittings and stuff. You'll just have to Google it and learn all that stuff, and you assemble them and put them together. And mount them. Yep. The pantry is the same way. Only the pantry was way complicated because. He didn't the want 12-inch shelf, shelves. I don't want 12-inch shelves. I wanted a big, deep shelf. So we needed 18 inches. Right? Well, they don't make a board 18 inches wide. So I had to get two by 10s, rip off a quarter inch on each one, and then sandwich them together, and then fill in all the gaps, sand, all that. So North, North Star Prep Center's on it. <coughs> West here. Man. Anyways, uh, so I made an 18-inch deep two by 12 to our two by 18 and it looks fantastic let me just say yeah the pantry is really 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 cool the, yeah the shelves are heavy yeah i can't even imagine if we had used hardwood yeah we didn't yeah I, I guess that could actually probably be a problem if it got too heavy if it gets too heavy yeah but the reason why, and stuff on well, it no, it'd be fine. Yeah, that too. But the thing is about pine and why it's probably better for this is because um, all boards will have some kind of crown or twist. Hardwoods do it a lot less than lighter woods, but pine flexes so much that even though those 18 inch shells were real cockeyed and twisted, we were able to suck them up to the shelving brackets where they lay flat and level just because there's so much flex in a pine board. Anyways. Yeah, the the complete reveal should be at by the end of this We have week. not shown the pantry yet. It's honestly too epic to show without it being completely finished. And we're getting there. Like, I'm trying to unpack everything so I can show it all we to We've got to unpack everything, and I've got to do some trim in there this over the next few days. And then once it's trimmed and painted, you can show the pantry. I will film some canning this year. Um, what temp of water burns coffee? Um, well, bo water boils at what? 212 degrees or something like that. And that's too hot. Uh, on my kettle. Hold on. On my kettle, it's the coffee setting is 185 degrees. So that's like significantly 
uh, cooler than boiling. We are in the kitchen. The rest of the house is looking pretty good. Oh, wait, it's ready to go. Oh, I was, oh that way. I was just trying to help you out there. See, there's the rest of the house. Got our color on, our ceiling's done. Floor. We might finish the floor the other Look, day. There's our cool fan. Look at that fan. It's like a cool, like, steampunk almost. It really is a little steampunky. Yeah, so. It's got like a little Edison bulb in it. Big yeah. bulb on the bottom. Yeah, he laid, he finished laying the floor yesterday. Oh, did it show the floor? Yeah. No, I didn't know. Yeah, the floors are in. The full pea pod, if your chickens are old enough to lay and they're not laying, um, it could be extreme heat or cold will do that. Uh, but I would check them for mites. Go out there um, and catch one of them and turn them over and spread their feathers out at their vent and see if you see anything crawling on their skin. Mites is the number one reason why your chickens will stop laying, in my experience. Um, yes, we are actually going to paint the outside of our house. And mm -hmm. I, we've already, every time we say that, people are like, don't you dare paint that brick. Our oh. house was very vandalized. And there are areas where it is a finely veiled curse words on and, our and house. And that's one of the main reasons. But I'll be honest, like, I like painted brick. Yeah. I like it. I like, I like it. it. He says, and I'm gonna do it. it. I like it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. And it's gonna look good. Um, it really is. It's gonna look good. For the people who I've seen multiple people again ask about getting rid of grasshoppers. It's not something I've ever dealt with, but some people gave some suggestions earlier. If you guys could put those up again there, I think some people missed them. Um is uh the ceiling is that cream color, and you can see the trim, how it pops a little bit. That's like a stark white that matches the tile. And that's going to be the trim throughout the house. And then the ceiling is this glass of milk color. Hey, we'll so we actually have head. both. The house was vandalized not because we weren't living here. It got foreclosed on and then sat vacant for such two a years. Deal. And so then, like, and plus there was, like, some water issues, which I've now addressed by taking up the garage door. And some other stuff going on that it's just... It basically, we got such a great deal because it was just a lot of messed up stuff that we had to fix. Yep. Totally worth it. We've been we've been here for six years, and we've been just working steadily the whole time, and it's finally getting to the point about uh, you know that it's like, yeah, this is awesome. It took a long time. Like maybe we'll stay here. Probably not, but yeah, we'll yeah. see. Um, if we do end up staying here, I'll be okay with it because oh, yeah. this kitchen is legit. I really do. I've really been enjoying. This has been really nice, for sure. Um, eh, Lens. I don't know. I might leave them if that were the case. You could pinch them off, um, but I, I don't. It, it probably wouldn't hurt if they've been in the ground that long to leave them. Greg Stafford, do you grow all of your food? Not all. We grow a lot of it right now, especially after this year, we'll have a year's worth of meat. Hey, Morgan stored. Goldshaw Farm. So that's <laughs> good. But that took, what's your advice to get that? Uh, start and pace yourself. Yeah. You try to do too much too, too fast and you'll mess it up, burn out and turn away from it so. it's good to have small goals like you know like one of the things i'd really like to do this year with having the high tunnel is i would like to can enough tomato products like spaghetti sauce and salsa and diced tomatoes to not have to buy those anymore and it's kind of interesting i mean you just you start making things and i mean we we have at this point we do grow a lot of our own um food our we Obviously, we don't buy things like eggs. Um, we do still have to buy dairy, but there are times when we have enough goats and milk that we don't have to buy dairy. Um, we do raise meat, and that, like, by the end of this year, I mean, we should be covering all of that. So, the shelves, someone I've seen it asked a couple times, the shelves are screwed down. Now, on the ones in the kitchen, uh, I just used a metal bit and drilled a hole through the pipe and then screwed from underneath Make into the board. Up. Okay. And that looks really good. It looks clean. So I just went ahead and did it through all the kitchen. But I actually see this right here. That's a rash that I got because little bitty microscopic flakes of metal got stuck in my skin and created this like 
just, it was bad. Yeah. And so I decided on the pantry, I was not going to do that. Plus I needed the pantry because the boards being so long, I mean, they're 10 feet long, 18 inches deep. So they were way more cockeyed and crowning and all that stuff. So I really needed to flex them down. So I used, actually I can show you. Hey, Deep South Homestead. Thank you so much. Yeah, one of my things with this was it's definitely forcing me to get rid of a lot of clutter, for sure, because I had a These lot of These are stuff. little pipe clips for, like, running electrical conduit and different things. You can screw conduit down with these. They come galvanized. Well, so we just set up however many we needed and painted them with our Rust-Oleum farmhouse black paint, which I will say, that's a, it's a really cool spray paint. So we found this random color. What? It was just you. You found that on Google and you did all your research reading. And there's only like 10 cans in like the whole state. <laughs> but Rosalium has this uh, paint and I don't know if you'll be able to find it. So don't get mad at me if you can't. But it's literally a matte. So it's not super shiny, which is what we wanted because that's like our faucet and everything else. And it's a matte black and it's called Farmhouse Black. And TJ, no, Michael's in... Conway had five cans and then I randomly found five cans at the Lowe's and I bought all that they had. And so we've painted, we painted this all well, because door all these handles. pipes don't come black. They all the pipes like, don't come black. You have to paint like them if you want to match. Like Jessica's downstairs are just how they come because we just did it. You know, we didn't paint them, which we could take them down and paint them if she wanted to. But honestly, they look good down there. But up here, because we had the black faucet and all black the other stuff. Black. So we really wanted to tie in the actual black so all the shelving brackets are painted. The door pulls on the cabinets are painted. These little clips are painted. And essentially, you mount the shelf on top of the pipe and screw it in. Yeah. Like that. Thank you, Donette Osborne McCarthy. I'm so inspired by your channel. I look forward to watching you. My first live I caught. Well, we're so glad to have you here. Thank you so much. And... Um, Melissa Alvarez said, really admire the way you respect each other and handle the daily life with such grace. Every aspect of your farm from veggies up to the kiddos shines through the love you have for each other. Thank you so much. You know, we talk, you know, like we talk to people and about like re relationships and stuff like that. And I say this all the time, Jeremiah and I, because, you know, we've had to work through, con you know, plenty of conflict and disagreements <laughs> and issues and stuff. But the thing, the thing that, She's so on it. This is a farmhouse black spray. Paint. <laughs> I hope they have it in stock. Um, but like we've always had the benefit of really like being in love with each other. So that is a really great benefit. Whatever try to work stuff out. I will be bringing back Mondays with Maya here pretty soon. Uh, I just honestly, there was a lot that needed to get done. We were just in a lot of transition and I did not have the capacity to focus on what needed to happen to get ready for this gardening season and shoot videos. But I have done some videos. Like I talked to, we did a video about the new garden beds. Deep South Homestead said that rust -Oleum is great. We are using the oil rub bonds to match everything in the off-grid kitchen. Yeah, it's, we've really liked it. It covers really well. And uh, Farmhouse black spray paint is one of the keys to a successful marriage. <laughs> she sure does like it though. I'll tell you what. Uh, Jeremiah has been, he's so meticulous about details. And let me tell you what, this whole remodel thing, I have gotten out of his way for him to do this remodel. And like, whereas I will cut corners for the sake of getting it done, getting it done and saving as much money as possible. And I'll be like, Oh, you don't have to do that. You don't need to do that. I'm, it's not that I'm not thankful. I'm so thankful, but that's just how I do things. Now I am super pleased with this, but I would not have ever driven for it to be so awesome. And so I've definitely just gotten out of his way and let him have his <laughs> expression on this. Um, nice. She'll come home and just, I'll be like, I'll just extend it into another area. Yeah. Like I just, I just recently extended it. Into I just came home and our staircase was ripped up. Like all the carpet was ripped up and, and the, the ceiling, ceiling was, was scraped. scraped. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're just doing this in the, the yes, staircase yes. as well. Yes. He's just, just keeps going. Oh, can I show him the curtain rods that I made up? Yeah, that'd be fine. Um, Skilly, how do you treat root and rot on squash? Root and... Um, or blossom in. I, I know if it's blossom in, a lot of times it's improper pollinate pollination, and so a lot of times you have to let you have to hand pollinate, and that'll help that root in. I'm not really sure. 
Okay. Look at this beast of a thing. Thank you, Kay Jones. Look at that. So See? these are the curtain rods that Jeremiah came up with. It's the same style. I got I'll be right back. But because we're just gonna go with it, we're just gonna put it everywhere. Just one more. But uh, so the the shelving for the pantry and for Jessica's thing downstairs, and for the uh, um pantry is all half inch black iron pipe, and so to do all the curtain rods, I actually got this is one inch, so it's like way thicker. And basically, I just designed a cool curtain rod that'll basically tie in family room where the big windows are with the stuff that's in the kitchen. I thought it was pretty cool. You know what I'm also going to do? I haven't really told Jessica this, but she won't care. Um, I'm also going to get, I'm going to use one inch pipe like that to come up with our handrail for the staircase because it's all going to be kind of like the same color scheme. So, so it'll be like this really cool, like black iron painted handrail. Okay, so who picked the house colors? All right, so I did do a good job on the kitchen, that is true. But I did not really have, like Jessica is the one who designed the kitchen, if that makes sense. Like all the color schemes, tile, like, you know, I want the open shelving, they paint the cabinets green, I want the open cow, like all that really like was, Jessica was just telling me, here's what I want. And then I was making it happen. So I'm really good at making it happen, but I'm not good at like choosing what looks good together. So we, we definitely teamed up on that one. Question for me, do you have to rough up the faucet fixture before you spray paint it? No, no, you don't. That, that Rust-Oleum paint will cling hold of metal. It's basically for the Rust-Oleum paint is basically will cling to metal it has primer in it. And it is for covering up rust. So I get bonds really well. Um, Chris said, what's your favorite part of the remodel? And not that it's over. I'm not done. It's not over. Good Lord. I wish it was over. It's not over yet. Um, my favorite part so far, the pantry. And, and uh, probably the second thing would be the floors. And then the last thing is, which I haven't put them in yet, uh, new doors. Because the design we got is on point. Um, if you guys have never looked up or heard of Cheyenne style interior doors, you should look them up. Hey, Talking Threads Media. They're pretty cool. Um, thanks for sharing your life with us, Patty. It is our joy and honor. Debate. Lowe's or Home Depot. We're Home Depot people, typically. We'll go to Lowe's when we have to, but... Hey, Mary McMurray, yeah, Hatchery, what's up? I'm really a Home Depot person. What is your least favorite part of the remodel? Um, yes, that is Spock. Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. I was like, no, baby. <laughs> no. Uh, honestly, the worst part of the remodel was having to, the family like still living here. Like, that's hard for any contractor to be like, hey, I need you to, we need to gut this whole space because that's what really needs to happen. But yet the family's still there. Like, most contracts would be like, no, not doing that job. Unless they're desperate for work. And then they'll be like, okay. I'm just being honest. Like, my brother's a contractor. They're like, yeah, we need to gut the whole kitchen and the family room and do all this stuff. And we're still going to live here. And he'd be like, not going to do that. Yeah. It just, honestly, like, it takes about 50% more time to do it with my kids still here and honestly Jessica's still here trying to cook and things like that. Like that was the hardest part. Um, that's why I honestly, why we got knocked it out as fast as we did. Like we really busted it to get it to this point. So it's always easier. And I always work better whenever I don't have those kinds of distractions. So 
Um, any advice for using composted chicken coop bedding as amendment? Any particular preferred procedure? Uh, we really just pile ours up, Gregory, and let it break down. We're not doing anything um, like special as far as like the procedure of composting it. The main thing is you want to make sure it's well composted. Uh, we like to compost it for like close to a year or so. Like, I mean, they say six months to a year, but I say a year on the safe side. But once it's broke down, it's just like soil. So, I mean, it's just like any compost and you can just use it however. Also, when it's the next pew, pew, pew. We're all extremely busy. Uh, Ethan is also remodeling his house while living in it. So I can only imagine how ridiculous that is. And he doesn't have any help like I do. So pray for him and bless him. Uh, Morgan is getting cats run over and having to pay him to take out a second mortgage for surgery. He's in, like, he's busy. He's got a lot going on. Obviously, I have a lot going on. So, uh, Basically, we're just not doing it right now. But they will do it. We will come back to it. Um, but not just, we're just taking a small break because there's just too much going on. You also got to think like all three of us have other YouTube channels. Right. And families. <laughs> well, Morgan has a wife and then a bunch of animals. But, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We have it's responsibilities. Family, Jeremiah. <laughs> we don't have any kids, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Wanda, thank you so much. You're so sweet and encouraging. Um, I don't know what model of Excalibur I have. I know it's the one with like seven trays, I think. Um, it's like the middle one is, is the one that I have, but I don't know what it is. The garden tour will be up tomorrow. Uh, uh, no, Kay Jones, I'm not, I'm not super worried about the metal and the, the beds. Thank you so much for noticing, Tammy. We've been, we've been exercising, working out. <laughs> <laughs> these are about the same size like, <laughs> there's like muscles in my neck <laughs> he's like, like this is awesome this is huge. <laughs> somebody asked to see the pink hutch and we just dis we distressed it oh goodness there it is yeah Stable, amy, stabilize it amy my cousin came over and distressed it so you can see like a little bit of the white shining through there it is uh we still have to put chicken wire back into the a little open. My dad came in today. That hutch, um, that hutch belonged to my great grandmother, and it was in fairly rough shape when I got it. As far as like part of the outside was like peeling off and stuff like that, and that's how it ended up painted. And now it's pink, so it's been white, and now it's pink. And of course, I don't, you know, I mean, it probably won't be pink forever. I'll probably repaint it again at some point. But my dad came over, and he was like, thanks for using Meemaw's Hutch as a centerpiece in your home. He was like, that would really bless her. And I was thinking about, you know, like, my great-grandmother passed away when I was a baby. And so I was just thinking about, like, when she bought this brand new and brought it into her living room or her, her dining room, and it held her china and all that stuff, like, what would she have done if she could see that piece of furniture now in her great granddaughter's house in the life that it is in? So, um, somebody asked about the t-shirt. Okay, so the t-shirt order has ended, so they should be going out here soon. Last time it only took them like a few days yeah, to start so shipping. Should be coming out so soon. some of them have uh, probably already shipped. We were trying to get some our new designs up for the weekend, and I don't think we got to it yet. So we're gonna try this week to get two brand new original never seen before designs and we will release those as soon as uh, they're done as soon as they're done and then they'll run for you know, like a couple of weeks or whatever and then we'll yeah. figure it out um the heirloom expo this year has been canceled for as far as i understand it has I'm it has sure. i saw the other day the heirloom expo has been canceled so no we will not be coming to the heirloom expo um the Mother Earth News Fairs, which we were scheduled for, have also been canceled. That's of course, they would have been in two weeks. That one, the one at Polyface Diana was in two weeks. Morgan, Morgan, say that. I can't say oh. more. Diana. Diana. Okay, Diana. Uh, there is a video up with me and Ben Turn going over all of our irrigation stuff. So yeah. if you're looking for that, it's already out there. Yep. Uh, when do you start your fall garden and what will you put in? Uh I'm actually, I'm going to do, you know, okay, your 9B, um, go ahead, pull those out. I would not replant in 9B for peas and lettuce until like, you probably don't have to plant that stuff until like 
September and non bean. Mm. So you definitely can plant like green beans and um, squash would be something that would go pretty quickly. You could plant probably a lot more than that non B. But I will start uh, starting indoor seeds in about two weeks. And I'll actually be putting a video up about that soon to get you guys thinking about that. Oh, raccoons and a groundhog. I'm so sorry, Jessica. Uh, what zone are you? Hey, Edward Franks, how are you? Um, I love when my family gets on here. Um, if Homesteaders of America still is going in October, yes, bandana grandma, grandma I, th I believe that we would still be going if it's still going in October. I mean, we have a, I mean, we've had our Airbnb booked for a while and the plan was to go, so you know, we'll see. Yes, there's a very detailed anything. drip irrigation installation video that we did. Yeah, Ben Turn, actually, that's one of the very few videos that Ben Turn has had some real camera time. Because that's what he was, he was doing professional uh, landscaping and stuff before he came here to work full time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Trudy, in Fayetteville, you should be fine with cucumbers in your fall garden. Um, you may want to start those inside and move them out. Uh, the thing is, is that I don't know. You could probably start them outside. I've done cucumbers in the fall garden multiple times the last few years. So zone six B basically. Okay. So I have a video about planning a fall garden that talks about finding your last frost date, how to count back about how much time, um, basically like for me, I'm seven, a seven B I start my, brassicas indoors in the middle of July uh, so that I can move them out in September. Um, and that's about the time that the weather's starting to, to break and cool off and, and settle down a little bit. And then that way that things are actually like getting bigger by the time it gets really cold. Um, I mean, you can still grow a lot of stuff like, um, Rebecca, whenever I, the hat that I had on in that video, I put a link at the bottom of the video. It's by Quicksilver, but I put a link to Amazon, um, for the hat on Amazon. I thought Spock looked pretty good up there. We're going to have dinner. Go on. Okay. Wait, just a few more minutes. We're about, we're almost done. Me too. They're hungry right now. Um... <laughs> Yeah, Spock staring us down with his judgy eyes. I don't guess Spock would be judgy. He's not. <laughs> that would not be logical. <laughs> um, yes, actually, my brother Drew is back to work. It's, um, you know, they have, like, rules that they're having to follow and all that stuff, but he is able to work. Oh, I forgot about that. Surfing Thank school. Surfing school? I uh, remember she's, I think she's in San Francisco area, saying like the next time we come to yes. or something, come out and get some surfing lessons. That would be so awesome. Candy. I would love to make a fool of myself. In <laughs> Thank you for sharing your wisdom and motivating this surfing school offer. That's really, <laughs> that would be really fun. I think uh, Jackson and Asher would get a kick out of that. Um, yeah, my headbands. Oh, I think I carried the other one back to my room. My friend Matthew actually took his cricket and he made one that said Roots and Refuge and sent it to me. And so I have a headband now that says Roots and Refuge. It's super cute. Um, when does a tomato <laughs> turn red? It's all the salad dressing, but a <laughs> we'll be here all night, folks. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Bandana Grandma. I'm clearly the nerd Star Trek fan. Yeah, sci-fi fan. Jessica doesn't even know the difference between Luke Skywalker and Captain Kirk. That's not true. <laughs> not that bad. Of have, course you know. I have watched at least Captain half Kirk of... is Vader's son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremiah took me to the movies to watch. It was one of the Hobbit movies when it came out in the theater. It was the one with the dragon in the cave. And um, so like we went. And he's so excited. Dragon the King. The Hobbit? One of those movies. <laughs> no? There's a dragon. <laughs> I don't remember it being in a cave. It was in a city. Wasn't it in the like, was mountain built or something? into a mountain. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's not mean. a cave. <laughs> okay. God, the dwarves would be so offended. <laughs> but listen. Okay. He 
took me to that movie. It was a midnight release. He loves to go see the midnight releases. He loves going to the movie theaters. Like, this has probably been one of the harder things about COVID for Maya. So I fell asleep. Like, we had got the tickets. We got there early. People are wearing costumes. It was. It was the smog one, the desolation hey, smog. Y'all stop agreeing with her. It's not a cave. <laughs> a cave is like, you get in as a hole. You make a little fire. It's like it's like a small thing. Or, or it's like, a, you know, like, it's not developed. But they had, like, there was an entire was city of dwarves. It was a cave city. Oh, my gosh. It was a cave city. Come on. You people. Anyway, I fell asleep. I slept Helms through like deep, half North of it. Pre- North Star Preps that are just. just <laughs> I love it. My so, people live for the mountain. So I did like that Ed Sheeran song. Uh, well, yeah. I see fire. That was a good one. <laughs> that was... Misty Mountain Roll. That was a good one too. So anyway, after that, Jeremiah was like, I love you. But uh, I accept the fact that this is not your thing. So it's okay. It's okay. But he is about to eat a tomato. Somebody asked earlier what the tomato story was. Do you want to tell it? You want me to tell it? I'll tell it. So we were on a live video. It's been, what, a month and a half ago? And um, we were just talking. And basically, we were talking about the fact that, like, we had – we had budgeted our kitchen remodel. And one of the things that we were going to be spending along with doing the kitchen remodel is we were going to be buying a freeze dryer and we were going to buy like the, like lower end model, the smaller model, because we really could not swing the bigger one. And basically we were just talking and somebody asked if Jeremiah liked tomatoes and he does not, he does not eat tomatoes. He doesn't like tomatoes. And here I am like the tomato queen. And someone else said on a live video, um, I'll throw in what they sell. I'll throw in $5. I'll, no, I'll put money towards a freeze dryer if Jeremiah will eat a tomato. I said, if you raise. And he just pops off. I said, like, if you guys raise enough money for just to get a freeze dryer, I'll eat a whole tomato. Yeah, and he then, said, I'll eat a beefsteak tomato. Yeah, that's what I said. And so people just start sending in super chats. And everybody just grabbed hold of it and ran with it. And I was completely dumbfounded. Like, I literally was just like, what is happening right now? And you guys in like 48 hours and the messages that we received of people being like, we just want to take an opportunity to bless you guys and say thank you. And and it was one of those instances where people just came together and bought us our freeze dryer, not just the entry level freeze dryer, but the the biggest one. And so we've been waiting for the tomato to ripen so that Jeremiah could hold up his end of the bargain because he wasn't going to eat a store-bought tomato. I mean, like, come on now, guys. I don't, I don't wish that on my enemies. <laughs> so uh, we are looking at. Uh, no, we have week. not gotten the freeze dryer yet. It was on 10 week back we order. We ordered it, but yes. it was on back order. So, so it we're looking at, at the like end, of the month. end of July, beginning of August sometime. So we ordered it and um, yeah. Uh, do I need a grow light to start seeds in the house for a sure gardener? Savannah, okay. it would be worth it to get one. You don't have to have one. However, truly, unless you have like a really great south facing window, you're going to deal with like uh, legginess and stuff like that. And you can get a pretty good grow light for affordably on Amazon. And it's definitely worth it. It makes a big difference as far as how well the, they do. So, um, Rebecca, my brother drew is actually the tattoo artist who did all of, all of our visible tattoos. Gregory died. We both have a couple. You shouldn't be forced see. to eat a tomato without the freeze dryer in hand. <laughs> well, then they might not. If He's we, not wrong. <laughs> don't you try to put it off. That doc, that first doctor. Do we all have says, a freeze dryer? Where's the freeze dryer? <laughs> I said, if y'all got a freeze dryer, <laughs> I don't see a freeze dryer. <laughs> yes. You're Get making me weight, nervous. Right? It's off the weight. Oh. Um, so... The first Dr. Witchies is the one that he said he was going to eat. I think Dr. Witchies would be a good one because it doesn't have a lot of seeds. It's not super acidic. Um, and uh, I just think that that would be a really good one for him to, to use. King of Town. I'm pretty sure that was a troll. Uh, troll. Salt is... I love good salt on the tomato. A Tabasco sauce? Yeah, I don't AK know Gardner's that would be probably right. Thing. I should do it now before the tomatoes get bigger. 
I think doing it now would be good because they just they're really good here at the beginning of the year. Oh, they're so good. No, I was thinking about making that tomato into like smash it up and put it on some pasta. But that's not what you agreed to. That isn't what I agreed to. I have to bite into that. Yeah, that things. tomato would be rotten and you'd still have to eat it. Um just remember that your daughter says grocery store tomatoes taste like this. Can I put some smoked salmon on top of it? <laughs> Uh, a freeze dryer is really, um, it's a really neat, like they, it's fairly new technology that they've made it where you can do freeze drying at home and it's just an appliance and the whole scientific process is basically that it like, it drops things to like sub zero temperatures and it caught, pushes all the moisture out and then it vacuums all the moisture out. And so essentially it makes it where you can save food for like 20 something years. I mean, of course it has to be like sealed with the little silica packs and all that stuff. So, um, so and um, we can go put it in the cave to be guarded by the dragon. Right? <laughs> right? Well, he didn't do a very good job of guarding that other stuff. He decimated the entire city and mounted up <laughs> so much gold. Oh, that must have been the part of the time that I was asleep. <laughs> You love me. <laughs> the, the, the next time you send me down in the garden to get something, like, hey, can you go grab some thyme or an onion? I'm just going to, like, grab something random and be like, oh, thought it was the same thing. <laughs> oh, I will be freeze drying everything. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh, you guys are not even ready for how much I'm going to be doing. The round things on the side of the fridge are uh, – little magnet herb containers uh, vis yeah visible tattoos i have a very i have a very unfortunate Listen, tattoo experience. i can throw up to live long and prosper and i can also throw up to live short and bankrupt <laughs> depending on if it's a friend or foe friend or foe live long and prosper live short and bankrupt what is that? it's the opposite of live long and prosper <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to follow up that little thought. Blah! Um, can you do them with the same hand? I don't know if we have that much. I actually can't do live long and prosper on my left hand. <laughs> it's over here the I thing. can't. My bank is like, I'll never listen. <laughs> like, you will submit. <laughs> I control you. But I can't. This one, though. Oh, oh my. Yes, Jeremiah is funny. He keeps a uh, he keeps keep it interesting. Up. A tattoo tour video. I don't know, like tattoo tour. There, I have one tattoo you will never see. I just want you to know that we're not going to do that unless Drew's hanging out with us. No, nah, yeah, that'll yeah, take Drew's all day. Got some tattoos like top of his head, butt cheeks. <laughs> Can't talk about our brother's butt cheeks on YouTube. <laughs> I'll never watch this video. So um. I made an unfortunate choice when I was 18 years old. I had $75 oh, yes. burning a hole in my pocket. And so she immortalized it. <laughs> it would have gone in infamy. <laughs> then your choice of tattoo there is just amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay. So finish the story. So I had this cross necklace that I wore all the time. It was very dear to me. And it was really pretty cross. And I wanted to get that as a tattoo. But I didn't want anybody to see it, um, like my family, because they would disapprove, which is hilarious now, actually thinking about it. My brother's a tattoo artist, and, like, we all have a lot of tattoos. Um, and so I put it on the place that many people put their tattoos in the early 2000s, um, which is my lower back. So I actually have a Christian tramp stamp. It doesn't look great after five kids. Um, so, yeah, you'll never see that. It's kind of the <laughs> But I just thought that was like, oh, so we're putting a cross on the body, and we put that right above the body. That's where that goes. Oh. I can't. Christian tramp stamp, exactly. <laughs> yeah. True story. That's a real thing. <laughs> it's my favorite tattoo she has. It's got, such, it's got such history. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh lord and um, so like i try to talk to my brother about hey uh can you cover this because i don't want to get it removed because that'd be really painful and so i was like can you just cover this and 
my brother, bless, bless him. Yeah. My brother is funny. He's a funny person. He just is hilarious. And so he's like, I'll put, I'll put a, um, a panther over it because it, you know, like a solid black animal will, you know, like basically when you have to do a cover up, it's hard unless you're going to put something really dark. And so he's like, I'll put a panther over it. And he's like, you know, a panther, <laughs> I was like, I don't wear a panther across the top of my butt. And he's just like, <laughs> that's all he'll do. He keeps that every time I've asked him, I'm like, hey, how <laughs> Will about- you show us if we raise money or something? No, <laughs> no, there is not enough money in the world. Send it in. No. <laughs> I'll wait till she's asleep and post a picture on Instagram. No. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so. Yeah, if you do a panther now in about 30 years, it'll be like a California raisin. So, anyway, every time I'd be like, hey, Drew, how about covering up that Christian trans stamp? And he's like, panther. And I'm like, no. <laughs> so, so, it just is what it is. It's just there. Yeah, you could get smog. That's a good idea. <laughs> In his, in his cave because <laughs> I'm such a big fan <laughs> so. oh so yeah that's it um, you could do a black tomato I'm sure he could do something with flowers he could do a lot of things but he uh, just won't panda he just doesn't want to do it so he's just like no and I just I actually just don't care um, thank you, John. I mean, I'm the only one who sees it, anyways. Yeah, like I don't, I just don't care. Like I don't, I don't even see it. Like I mean, I, I don't. I don't see it. So, you know. I could just take a Sharpie and make it. <laughs> so, it is what it is. Um, so, that is why now I have a rule in my heart that if I want a tattoo, I need to want it for at least a year. Because I have made bad decisions in the past. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Said, yeah, for I, the people who are coming in late, you're welcome. Bethany Urban this. Farms like I joined at a weird time. <laughs> yeah, you need to back up a little bit. Coral's like, what did I just walk into? Uh, oh. Skillies, yes, that's a Berkey water filter back there on the counter. Yeah. Mm, my daily schedule, um, it's usually just about priorities and what needs to be handled that day. So, um, I do have another tattoo that like you don't see very much. Except. Um, I am kind of like a dwarf, except that I'm uh, that six foot you probably, one. You probably don't see that one Dwarfs very are much. Not that that, tall. That's a dove that I have. So. Um, so, yeah, and when people are like, when I, because you get a lot of tat, you get a lot of comments about having tattoos. It's weird because I don't think of myself like I don't think of like being like being tattooed. Like I just don't even think about it that much. Um, it just is what it is. But. Uh, I have, uh, you know, you get comments being on YouTube and it's so funny. Like some of the things that people say <clears throat> about tattoos and people are like really concerned about what I'm going to look like when I'm old. And I'm just like, bro, that's fine. Like I'm not stressed about it. Like, it's just like, I just don't put that much value. It'll be okay. Like, I, I don't know. I guess you, you, yeah, you could have a, you could have a panther like eating on a tomato. <laughs> And then That'd don't tell me about it. <laughs> and then I'll just be surprised. One day I'm just going to come home with a panther tattoo on my lower back. Oh my gosh. Uh, thank you so much, Bandana Grandma. Um, a Holy Spirit tramp stamp. That's hilarious, Monica. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I won't be the only old tattooed person here in another, what, 40 years or so. If, uh, yeah, it'll be fine. What squash varieties are your favorite to grow and eat? Um, I, I haven't really met a squash I didn't like. I really like Rampicante. I didn't grow it this year, but I'm definitely going to have that next year. That one's a really cool one. Um, I actually have an appointment with an, another tattoo artist that I really like her work, and she's local. And um, after summer, so once I'm not, like, once I can cover it and not be out in the sun with it. But I actually have an appointment for this side. Mm -hmm. Not the whole thing, but part of it. So I actually haven't said that to anybody. Yep. He no, knows. just so told it to you. 1.9 thousand people. Now you know. It's out. Um, <clears throat> so mm -hmm. I work in a nursing home and you wouldn't believe the tats older women have. I mean, I think we're kind I of I have some kidding. pretty good at tattoo ideas, though, because, like, I thought about... And I know this is not real, guys. So I'll just preface that. But I was just like, you know, if you tattooed like 
Benjamin. And he did. We small. would never do this. I have it, to say if this. If you made we'll it message. small, like and spelled out something, <laughs> when he grew up, you'd be able to read it. <laughs> Jeremiah, that would be pretty Jeremiah cool. Came once. He's like, so if you tattooed, like, I was like, we're not doing that. He's like, I know, but I'm just thinking hypothetically, if you tattooed a small person, would it grow out? And I think he probably got that idea from the Christian trips too. They would it used to be. So um, my first tattoo was supposed to be a mandolin. I, it looks like it was drawn with a Sharpie. I've made bad decisions as well. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He showed in. Yeah. Uh, I, Drew is really, really good at what he does. I mean, obviously he's very good at what he does. And I, I, that's the one thing that I tell people, I'm like, do not cheap out on a tattoo. Like don't just get what you can get for a good deal. You're going to have this for a long time. Like this is the thing to, to wait until you can like get a good artist that knows what they're doing. I think it'll be really cool when your grandkids ask about your tattoos and you'll be the cool grandparents. I hope so. I think that'd be really cool. Are you guys going on vacation this summer? I don't think so. Uh, we're going to spend a few days at the lake. And yeah, we're going to go summer. like, we're going to do some camping. Um, we've, we've gone camping once. So, um, so I, but yeah, I mean, most places, a lot of stuff isn't open or at least not in a way that we would want to go to it. So. I would actually, yeah, never go cheap on a tattoo. Um, whenever, <clears throat> whenever my brother and I first started getting tattoos, he's two years younger than me. And so we first got like our first couple of tattoos or, you know, the f- first ones. And I think I got my, uh, my nose has been pierced so many times. I don't even know how many times my nose has been pierced, but like, um, and I've had facial piercings and stuff like that. But whenever we first started getting that stuff and my mom was like, Ah, you know, like, I can't believe you're doing this. And we're like, well, mom, I mean, you did tell us not to waste our money on things. We wouldn't have anything to show for it. She was just like, that is not what I meant. But she's actually, uh, she's gotten, I mean, it's just like, it, it's just normal now. My mom actually got a tattoo for my brother. The dove that's on the back of my neck, my mom and my brother and my sister and myself, we all have the same tattoo. So True. <clears throat> and all my brothers have a tattoo. That's supposed to be the brother's tattoo, but I don't have it. Yeah. Oh, I really hope that that can happen, Chris. We definitely need to plan something. Um, Malia is going home this coming weekend. She's going back to Vegas, um, which is sad. But also, like, we'll we'll have like people who are visiting us. We'll probably come after that because we'll have a spare room for them. Um, no, I have never lived in a cooler climate than, than this. I have only ever gardened in the South. I've lived in Knoxville, Tennessee. I didn't garden there. I had some like patio containers and stuff. Uh, I lived there for two years and I've lived in, um, like around Houston, Texas for a little while, which was obviously hard, uh, hotter than this. Good night, living a rogue life. Um, well, Ready to wrap it up? Yeah, I'm ready to wrap it up. We gotta feed our kids. I'm I need to, to go out and shoot something outside so I can send right. it to work. Alrighty. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight, and we will talk we'll to you later. See ya.